Okay, which of the following mm -hmm. are used to define a sales area? Well, there's no contention about that. It's just those three, by definition. Right? The combination of division, sales, organization, distribution, channel, that defines the sales area. That's just the definition. And you should definitely know that, uh, you know, memorize those, uh, that, that idea. Okay, which of the following organization levels are dedicated to SD? Uh, say A and C. Just shipping point and sales organization, right? Uh, how many sales organizations can a company code have? Many. One company code can have many sales organizations, as many as needed. Uh, and a sales organization can belong to only one company code. Right? So this is only purchasing organization can cut across company codes. Sales organizations are dedicated to company code. Okay? So Okay, distribution channel, um, A and B, of course. Uh, now, see, the thing about distribution channel is it sounds just as the, the way I said it in when I uh, gave the lecture. Distribution channel sounds like a, you know, sounds like a transportation or real logistics kind of thing, right? But it's really a marketing thing. It's about uh, how you make the products available to customers, but it has nothing to do with the physical product. Right? It's about what mechanism you use to sell to different types of customers. Right? So for example, wholesale and retail. Right? If I want to buy one piece of something, I can't go to a wholesale. They won't sell it to me. Right? But if you want to buy hundreds of something, then you'll go to a wholesaler and the wholesaler will sell to you. Right? So the the organization structure that they have set up to sell to people who are large buyers, that's called the wholesale distribution channel, right? Whereas for retail, of course, you know, uh, you've got stores and stuff like that that has been set up. And that is meant for, uh, you know, people who are buying in smaller quantities, okay? And the same company may be selling stuff through the internet. So that could be uh, another distribution channel altogether. Right? So it really has nothing to do with physical distribution of the products. It's about the mechanisms by which you make products available to different categories of customers. Really. Okay. And therefore, distribution center and shipping point and loading dock, those are all dealing with the physical aspect of moving the material. That's not what a distribution channel is about. Okay. What's a division usually used to represent product line? Question. Yeah. What do you mean in two? In two? Which of the four organizations are dedicated to SD? Meaning, uh, uh, no, dedicated to SD in the sense of other org other parts of the system don't use those. Only sales and distribution is concerned with those two things. So in, in inventory management and material management, Sorry, inventory. I thought when you create, um, for example, when you, when you create a transfer requirement based on a sales order, doesn't it refer back to the sales organization that it came from? No. No. Transfer request is just to say, get these things out. And well, amongst those different types, there wasn't one that went back to you. No. These are dedicated. In fact, the slide also says that explicitly that these are dedicated to sales and distribution. Right? The course material explicitly says that. SAP's material, not my interpretation of it. Okay, so it's there. Uh, which of the following statements are true about sales areas, B and C? Right? So sales area is nothing but any combination of those three. Right. So obviously you could have a sales organization, uh, sales organization one division one distribution channel one, and then sales organization two, you know, division one distribution channel one. Right. So th that's what it is. A sales organization could be used to define different sales areas. Those two things I mentioned were two different sales areas, but the sales organization was the same in both of them. Okay. So it, because it's a combination, you could have the same sales organization. But the division or the distribution channel may be different. So then the sales area becomes different. Okay, so uh, that's why 
uh, B is true. And similarly, a division can be used in defining different sales areas. Right? So the same division, the sales organization may be different. Okay, so then that becomes a different sales area. Okay, so A and D are not valid. How many sales areas can a plant be associated with? Many. And how many plants can a sales area serve? Many. That's a many to many relationship. One sales area may be serving many plants and a plant may also be uh, serviced by many different sales areas. What role does plant play in sales and distribution? Location, Location from which products are distributed or services are rendered. Okay. Yeah. Right, but the, the storage is the role of a plant, of a plant, but for sales and distribution, what is the key thing about a plant? Every SP should have one plant associated with that. Every sales document should have one Sales area should have one plant associated. Maybe many also. We should have at least one. Should have at least one. No, no, but here what I'm saying is what role of plant so far as sales and distribution is concerned. What about distribution? What about distribution center? It's a plant. Yeah. It's a plant. DC is a plant. So storage is that a role that a plant will play in sales and distribution? In materials management, you're concerned with storage. Yeah, right. In plant, you're more concerned with from which location am I going to satisfy this sales order. Right? right? That is the whole point. The point is, SD is not concerned with storage for its own sake. It's concerned for, about storage because I'm going to satisfy this request from that storage location. Right? So the location from which products are distributed or services are rendered. Right? So I've got a project. This project is going to be handled from my New Jersey office in the context of uh, service. Right? Or uh, washing machines in, uh, you know, in Piscataway will be serviced by my Edison office. Okay? That's the idea. So you're not interested. SD is not really concerned about storage for storage sake. Inventory management is concerned about that. But SD is concerned about storage because it says I can meet the sales order from this location, from that storage location. Okay. So example of a plan for a service organization, I just gave that. Or maybe it's a, you know, look, uh, a consulting office which, you know, service, uh, which handles a particular project or this, uh, you know, all washing machines in, you know, in Middlesex County will be serviced by the office in uh, Piscataway, right? So it becomes a service center and the, you know, that office will be a plant. That Piscataway office, which services all the washing machines in Middlesex County, that will be a plant which provides the service. Okay, so in the context of location from which services are rendered, Piscataway office is the one that does that, okay. Relationship of shipping points to plants, many to many. Plant can have many shipping points, a shipping point can belong to many plants or be associated with many plants. Which of the following represent master data used in sales order? BCD, BCD customer master, output master, condition master. Output master is, let's say the sales order is placed, right? You want to send out a confirmation of the sales order to the customer, right? One customer may want the confirmation sent out as a fax. Right. Another customer may want the confirmation printed out and sent to them. Right? The output master is the one that determines. Right? That is, so for example, I am selling to you. You are my customer. Right? Now somewhere I have to keep information about the fact that you prefer it to be faxed to you. Output master will say, this customer prefers it by fax. Okay? It's not just customer. I just gave customer as an example but it could be all kinds of combinations. Okay, this one was uh, a little sneaky, 14, but I throw it in because sometimes you might encounter that kind of question. So it says, which are the mandatory uh, uh, 
partner functions in customer master sold to party ship to party definitely are mandatory the others are all partner functions but only thing is they are not mandatory right they are all of course billing party is not valid it's not a partner function bill to party right so what be the difference between billing party and bill to party very big difference billing party is the party that does the billing right if i bill you i am the billing party you are the bill to party right so there's a difference so you have to read some of these things a little carefully not just this thing and of course the fact of uh, it telling you how many correct answers there are can be used as a hint right so suppose it says there are two correct answers and you have come up with three then you you are faced with eliminating one of them so then you have to read each of them carefully and eliminate the one that's off Uh, at least two different partner functions must be involved in a sales order. False, right? In other words, uh, you know, sold to party, ship to party, billing, bill to party, uh, everything might be the same. Okay, could most of the time, in fact, that will probably be the case. Uh, which of the following pieces of information might appear on the customer material info record? BC, BC, because customer's material number. right remember just to remind you uh, the customer material info record is any information that applies to the combination of customer and material not just to the customer not just to the material but to the combination of the two right yeah why not a because let's say if you're getting the, the, some commodity and uh, for particular contract in a customer you said that it's based on moving average price of let's say steam or something i don't know based on the customer only with that customer you got that contract and only for that raw material yeah but that will be part of the contract not it's not part of the master right here which pieces are actually part of the customer material uh, info record right that information is not it doesn't happen to be part of the info record okay you're saying it's part of a contract so that's probably occurring free, infrequently then that will be in the contract Okay. Where does the contract go? Where does the contract stay? Contract, you know, contract is another document. It's another, uh, you know, company enters into a lot of contracts. So that will be, you know, it will be a separate piece of uh, document, S separate master record, really. Okay. So customer material number. Yes, you want to keep the customer's material number. You would like to refer to that material number when you print document and send it to the customer, so that it's easy for the customer to know that. and delivery tolerances for this particular customer right so average monthly sales moving average price these are all figures that you might calculate for this particular customer right you might calculate these but these are not kept in the customer material info record right it doesn't it doesn't mean that these can't be calculated they can be calculated it's just not kept there okay the system uses the condition technique in determining how particular st document is to be sent by sent meaning communicated yep output master uses the condition technique meaning what mechanism does the output master use in figuring out the logic right it uses the condition technique the various conditions are you know the document the customer the etc etc you also use conditions in terms of prices prices yeah most of the play times condition technique is prices but it's just a technique okay which can be used in other places as well okay so that's this 18 is the condition master used to define the material prices for various complex combination of criteria so there's both a condition technique and a condition master master right there is a condition technique and a condition master and the condition master uses the condition technique also okay <laughs> So example for 18 is uh, you know things like there is a discount of you know 5% for uh, this product sold in this region during these dates. Right? It's a complex things of factors. You will put that in the condition master and give it a condition. And when you create a sales order, SAP will go and pick up the condition from there. Okay, which of the following steps? Would be the first to occur among those listed. Okay. 
A B. B is the one, right? Because the creation of outbound delivery, but right? You didn't mention just answer one in the. I thought you needed the whole sequence of it. So. Oh, which of the following steps would be the first? Only one of them can be the first. Okay. <laughs> no, it's possible that you know you have alternatives, and many of them could be the first. Right? I should have said one. No, I get the sequence. I answered the whole sequence, like how it would have. Okay, so you knew which was the first. So if it was properly worded, you would have got it. Yeah. Right. See, this is sometimes confusing. Uh, when you say creation of outbound delivery, what do you understand by that term? Right, but what is outbound delivery? It's a document. See, outbound delivery is just a... See, when we say delivery, we think of it as the actual act of delivering something, right? We think of it as literally products loaded onto a truck. No, that's not it. That, that, ana that analogy or that understanding causes a lot of confusion. Outbound delivery is just a document that starts off the process of shipping things to the customer, right? So it's really a very early stage of satisfying a request to a customer, right? It's a very early stage. You create the outbound delivery, then that starts off the process of getting the items out of the warehouse and shipping it to the customer. Right? That only is the initial part of the process. That's why this is probably the first step that occurs out of these. Right? So once you create the outbound delivery, against that outbound delivery you can do picking. Right? That kind of authorizes everything else to start. Right? Then you go pick, you pack, you post goods issue and then you ship it. Okay? So outbound delivery is just a document, a delivery document that starts the process, right? So just after you've created the outbound delivery, physically nothing may have happened, but your delivery document exists, right? So it's not proof that something has been delivered. It's just, okay, let's start the process. That's all it is. Okay. Um, okay. So I think it's important to understand that the outbound delivery, when they say outbound in a, in, in a question, suppose they refer to something outbound delivery, right? Think of it as the document. Even though they don't say outbound delivery document, think of that as a document, just a document. Okay, which of the following documents can a sales order be based on? A and C. No, it's not RFQ. It's request for quotation, right? RFQ. RFQ is a request for quotation. Right, but you can still make a sales order if you award a particular vendor from that RFQ. Right? You request for not a vendor. Here we are the vendor. It's a sales order. So a customer sent us an RFQ. I know, I know. That's why I put it that this confusion can exist. No, but okay. A self inquiry. Yeah. So can strictly an RFQ and an RFI are both forms of sales inquiry. Yeah, strictly speaking, they are. No, but in SAP, they are two different documents. They are actually different documents. RFQ, in response to that, you will send a quotation. Yes. In response to an inquiry, this document that you save, it's simply called a sales inquiry. Okay. But still, strictly speaking, yeah, you get an RFQ, you send a quotation, then you get an order. But you you could you could still link the, the sales order to the RFQ that generated the quotation, right? No, see, okay, here, think of it this way. When you are actually creating a sales order mm -hmm. in the SAP screen, you will base it on a quotation. You can say, uh, you know, this document, uh, is based on the quotation or you can say it's based on the inquiry. There's no option for based on an RFQ. There's no such option on the screen. Would the quotation come from the RFQ? Yeah. yeah. The quotation would have come from the RFQ. So you're saying you can't directly link to the RFQ or RFI? When you're creating an actual sales order, you won't be able to say base this on an RFQ. You'd say base it on a quotation. Okay. 
That's what you'll be able to do. Yeah. yeah. And once again, you know, here you know that it can be based on a quotation for sure. And you definitely know it can be based on a sales inquiry. So it says the third one coming up, you have to figure out which is the most likely one that I can eliminate. If RFQ was the third one that came, you said, well, RFQ came before the quotation. So let me throw out RFQ. Okay. Which is the more direct connection, if there is any ambiguity. You can't link to a purchase order. can't link to a purchase order, that's for sure. Right. So an RFI, at least it's not there in this course. So you can leave it out. Okay. So then it's only this. Okay, which of the following represent benefits of using the pre-sales feature? Just from the slide, uh, you know, A and C. I agree. And this is a somewhat contentious question. Right? Even when I knew or no wrote it, I knew that there could be this. Okay. They are already mentioned like these are the only advantages. I understand. So, but I, I'm just not that understanding. That depends on your um, understanding. If you really understand, if you do, if you take steps to change your... <laughs> right. You might not. So you might not. You may have to <laughs> you <might> not. <laughs> You're absolutely right. But then, so then it begs the question, why are you tracking law sales? You might do a bad job of it, so it's one step removed. Absolutely, so it's one step removed. That's all. Right. Can you just explain C for me, please? The advantage of doing business with customers who want to document the whole sales process. Right. So you, if you don't have pre-sales, then you can't document the whole process, right? You can't tell the some customer says, "Okay, can you just tell me, uh, show me the complete oh, process?" Uh, you can't document it if you don't have it. If you have it, you can. Anyway, this is you know. I hope there are no ambiguities like this in the exam. Okay, yeah, 22, I am actually not sure uh, about one of the options. Okay, maybe we'll bother Professor Chi about this. Uh, which of the following must be specified to create a sales order? Sales area, definitely. That you have to. Customer, you have to. You can't create a sales order without a customer. Uh, Lian, quick question for you. <laughs> I have a doubt. I'm sorry. I have now clarification on this question. 22. Okay. Uh, I wrote the question. Uh, to create a sales order, do we have to have a required delivery date? Yes, so far. You do. Yeah. How about the customer material number? Need yeah. not. Customer material number don't have to. Be. It may not. You may not even have it. You don't need a sales group. Sales office. Nothing. There is nothing like a sales group. Right. It's only purchasing group. Interesting. Right. Okay. So yeah, so I had put this in, but I had a doubt. Okay. So required delivery date is required. Okay. Availability check and all that. Yeah. 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 So this is part of the answer. I was just a little doubtful whether this is there. So the correct answer is B C D. Okay, B, C, D is the correct answer for this. Okay, 23, which of the following present possible ways in which a sales order can be created? B and C, purchase order can be the reference doc, no. Can be created independently, yes. Multiple pre-sales document can be combined into one sales order, yes. You take several quotations and combine into one sales order, several inquiries. Combine into one sales order. Uh, can be based on prior scheduling agreements. Well, in that case, it's not a sales order. The sales order already occurred earlier. You're only shipping against something that occurred now, uh, that has already occurred. No, here we are talking about our own company, 
right? Because your sales order is nothing but a per customer's purchase order. Customer is purchasing, right? Yeah. So here, when we say purchase order, we are talking from the context of our company. Oh, our internal purchase order. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Twenty-four material item and free of charge item. Okay. Now these other things are also item types in other contexts, right? They're not item types in the sales order context. That's all. It is. In fact, uh, we get it all the time when we get books for 